Hey there, I'm Jamie and here are 50 useful tips and tricks to help you have even more fun in Enshrouded. At some point in your journey in Enshrouded, you're going to accidentally step on some of this red shit. If you haven't got enough time left to actually get out of the shroud, even if your time is getting down quite low, you just press escape and return to your main menu. As soon as you log back in, you will be back at your closest base. On the map here, coming from the Ancient Spire Revelwood, and this is the location of the Blue Inn Tavern. And what you can do instead of building an entire base from scratch, is you can claim this entire building by placing down an altar. And then just check your borderline completely encompasses all of the Blue Inn Tavern. Enjoy a ready meal building with already comfort level of 25. Find out different types of weapons will actually show you whether they are effective or ineffective against different enemy types. It's always good to have different ranged options in your wands, bows and melee weapons. This way when you come across monsters that are more resistant to certain weapon types, you will have options to overcome any combat situation. It's always a good idea to craft new items as they unlock, especially the ones with the exclamation marks next to them, as these not only will complete quests, but on many occasions unlock other recipes that you will need later on. A good example of this is you need to grind up critter parts for making bug dust and after you've made this item it will unlock the recipe for creating goo which is one of the ingredients you will need for one of the best quality of life items in the game and that is the magic chests. What I do is stack anything that says materials on it in any of the blue chests that you create. It saves you a lot of time in trying to search for everything in the future when you want to craft anything. Building tall towers at any of your bases will give you a much better starting point to be able to glide a lot further and help you traverse the map a lot easier. If you don't fancy a tower, how about a city in the sky? I'm sure Lando Calrissian would approve. And all you need to be able to make this is two altars. You place down the one and then build upwards using the terrain tool. This saves from having to build any of the blocks. You place the platforms up as far as you can possibly go. And then on the top platform, create another altar and then extinguish the first one. You rinse and repeat this process to go all the way up into the sky. And there is actually a max limit. When you reach it, you will see like a yellow smoky cloud. This will give you an extremely high starting point to be able to glide very long distances. If you glide in through the air and find yourself running a bit low on stamina, what you can do is right click, drop a bit and then re-engage. Gliding is even better if you take the following skills. That is airborne to use 30% less stamina whilst you're gliding, pairing this with updraft and it's a total game changer. Because whilst you're gliding, you can press the jump button and get an additional boost in height. As long as you've got 120 mana. You can do this once per flight only. Unless you've got fast fingers, then you could cancel the flight, re-engage and then press spacebar to jump again to get an additional booster. Willow Crush is a very nice area to be able to get plenty of honey and wax. Located on the map, that's where you start off, Ancient Spa Springlands and then up north from there, there is where you'll find Willow Crush. There's a good six or seven hives or more you can actually farm. Also in Willow Crush, there is a hidden item for you to grab. At this bill here, if you dig down, you can get yourself a Ring of Rapacity. Currently, this is the best mana ring in the game. But why settle for one? Come on back and grab yourself a pair. I wish I knew about this one earlier. And that is there is a hidden gold chest just underneath Braylon Bridge. At the bottom at the middle pillar, and if you dig down just below this rubble, this is where you will find it. Did you know about this one? In any game, having extra inventory space is always very handy. And right after you've completed the hunter's quest for the hand spindle, just at Westcott, if you go back to her, what you'll be able to craft then is a small backpack, giving yourself eight extra inventory slots. It's a good idea to upgrade your glider as soon as you possibly can. And in this area, Lone Thistle is a good place for these little blue plants. And once you kill them, this is where you'll get the shroud sacks from. You need eight of these to be able to craft the improved glider. In Ferndale, there is also another gold chest inside the large building, just behind the bookcase here. And this will complete the quest, finding the chest under the stairs. Ferndale is also a great spot for getting yourself plenty of books, lockpicks, and the fun favourite, the thermal detonators. 
make sure you don't neglect strengthening the flame of your altars because the higher it goes the more your shroud passage level will increase what this means is more of the red shroud will then turn to blue making it far easier for you to navigate and explore the map it's m to open it up and then you can move it around with your left mouse button if you press c it will center it back to where you actually are if you don't like the standard you can actually create your own markers for different areas on the map you just right click create your marker and you've got colors and four different symbols to choose from whenever you're out exploring keep an eye on for the old red books or red scroll they are worth the read even if you're not interested in the lore what they can quite often do is put extra points of interest on your map when you need saffron a great place to get it is sun Zemir. if you head up all the way along here into the desert area and what you're looking for are these little purple plants here as well as sun Zemir, just up to the northwest a little bit you'll also find pockets all around the desert area where you can find the purple plant for the saffron and straight after if you find any of these big like hand finger things on the map is where you will get your fossilized bone as an archer you probably burn through arrows incredibly quickly keep your eye out for these little thatched bases because all of it is made up from twigs before you reach the desert area you can also get hold of loads of twigs from the wolf dens and you can mine down these incredibly deep you'll be surprised just how many twigs you can get hold of if you end up exploring the desert area and you want to build yourself an altar in the desert all you're going to end up with is sand sandstone or fossilized bone if you follow the path until you come across where it's slightly paved this is where you can find yourself a few stone to be able to build yourself an altar if you're feeling thirsty after your time in the desert then you can get yourself an unlimited supply of water by doing this trick with the wells at the moment in game what you can do is place down the wells take out all the water pick them up place them back down again and repeat the process this may get patched out in the future but for now it's a great way of stocking up for your farms speaking of farms a good one to go to is diadwin farm located just the southeast of the revelwood spire just like all farms this is a great place to come to pick up new plants that you can then tear up and reseed back at your base what you will also find at this farm are hazelnut trees if you harvest these hazelnuts they are great for mealy builds as they give plus three strength and also after you've grabbed your nuts you can then chop them down and get twigs and you end up with two or three twigs from each of the bushes plus the farms are a great source of getting hold of farm soil to take back to your base with the farm soil in your build category you go down to your terrain then control and then click down to your farm soil and if you just place one down you can switch over to the rake and spread it along if you would like to destruct any of the buildings that you've taken over by placing down an altar what you will need to do in the build menu is scroll down to the smallest sections the one meter blocks is best trying this with any of the larger sections you cannot right click to deconstruct to recover any of the blocks if you would like to have yourself a cellar or swimming pool go into your build mode select any block you want place it into the dirt right click to remove them and there you have a perfectly square hollow when it comes to comfort it's always best to look for what will give you the highest number so not all of your lighting and your beds and your tables will be equal here the candle will be plus two comfort let's go with the candle plus two comfort the firefly lamp which you might think will give you more comfort only gives you plus one and you can't just stack them and put loads of beds next to one another and expect to get 20 comfort for instance it's only the highest of the first place item that will actually count towards towards your comfort level and you don't have to cram everything in a tiny area like this either if you need to fight at night time or in a dark cave and you can't see for shit throw down your torch onto the floor then after your combat you can just pick it back up again you just hold down e briefly to throw it down after combat to regen your health incredibly quickly strawberries and bandages make a great pairing after you've rescued your farmer you've got your ancient vault just up from here is a very good place to grab yourself plenty of strawberries just a bit upwards northeast of the ancient spa revelwood about round about here is a good place to pick up your chamomile tea they look like little white daisies the chamomile seeds are the last ingredient that you will need out of the four to be able to craft the greater health potions when you enter any of the spires for the first time it's always a good idea to smash up the urns using a pickaxe quite often you will then discover new items and in turn this would unlock new recipes for you when you come into land sometimes it has a tendency to bounce and roll forward and unfortunately lead you to fall down and into the shroud again 
what you need to aim for is the actual green patches on the mountains if you bounce into the actual areas that haven't got any green on them you have a tendency to slide all the way back down if you look for the little grass parts even if you just land on them you will not slide back down again some of the chests and also the doors in Entraded, you need a lockpick to open them you can craft these manually and it will cost you two metal scraps per lockpick if you craft them at your blacksmith they will only cost you one scrap metal per lockpick a great place for getting scrap metal early on in the game is Rookmoor not far from where you'll start off with your first base just kill the guys there and you'll end up with plenty of scrap metal and also cloth even before then when you just start off in the game in the cinder vaults if you come back once you've got yourself a pickaxe each time you start the game if you want some scrap metal what you can do is come along and break any of these pods that have actually been opened if you want to go back to any particular area all of the monsters and items will respawn after two hours as long as you stay far enough away from the actual zone alternatively for now what you can do is just return to the main menu restart the game and all of the items and monsters in that area will actually respawn don't be mean to any of your crafter friends and chuck them outside some of their crafting abilities may not become available to you if you leave them outside they get very grumpy and moan about the weather all day i think a few of them might actually be english of all the skills you can unlock in entrouded the number one that i'd advise above all else as soon as you can is double jump one of the other skills that everybody seemed to be getting was water aura this has actually been nerfed but it is still useful as it gives you a health regen tick and it will help out your party as well especially if a few of you have it because it will actually stack sometimes in this game it can be a right pain in the ass to try and go around all the way around these mountains to get up to the towers you use your pickaxe what you can do is got quite a long reach and you can actually make yourself some stairs and work your way up if you couple this with the skills of double jump it saves you having to go all the way around and in about five minutes you can just dig your way up if you end up with any gates blocking your path to finish off a quest don't forget you can just smash down the wall with your pickaxe any of the trees have got a chance of dropping resin but for a much greater chance the best bet is to go for the orange leaf trees the paths in entraded are not only good for getting from point a to point b for points of interest but also would end up using a lot less stamina when you're sprinting and running along them even more so when the path is actually paved if you keep your eyes open whilst you're out exploring if you see any rock formation like this this has got a couple of barrels on top so it's easy to spot whenever you destroy the ground they would have a chest underneath if you're not keen on the camera angle being zoomed into your character you can press z and just roll your mouse wheel backwards and forwards to adjust to however you wish what you can also do is in the settings and also your field of view depending on how strong your pc or graphics card is if you write this all the way up to max you will be able to see a much further distance in detail helping you to pick out some landmarks that you may wish to get to if your pc is struggling a little bit though it might be better if you put this down to about halfway or even less it might not be just as clear in the distance but it might help things run a little bit smoother for you when it's night time to speed things up you can just sleep in your bed and it will speed up the night cycle by 60 percent the best time to collect the fireflies is at the night time these are handy for making some very nice looking lights and also the wisp lights however i would not advise crafting any of the wisp lights as it only has a very short duration of five minutes and save the fireflies for making the firefly lamps tugged in any of the shroudwood plants you come across is a great way of getting yourself some extra skill points don't bother trying to destroy them with your wand or your melee weapons quickest and easiest way is to use your fell axe as it does way more damage if you plan on going on a long expedition or anything risky then it's always handy to either craft yourself an altar ready to place down or have the stone to be able to make one on the fly you'll have a nice quick way of teleporting back to where you would have died with so many different items to collect in entraded to save yourself a lot of time in organizing them you can shift and right click and auto stack items you've collected in the chests where you've already got the same item in them enhancing your weapons in entraded will greatly improve the damage that you do the higher quality of the weapon you've looted the more you can upgrade it if you pick up and loot especially out of the chest any weapons or armor you can always salvage these to get more runes to enhance the gear that you do want to keep when you're out fighting in any of the settlements keep your eyes open for these anvils as it will save you having to go back to base because they work as a workbench and you can repair all your gear and items from them if you wish to host a game for your friends to join you 
please don't neglect using a decent password for your server or even leaving it blank as you don't want any random coming along and stealing anything you've looted or even worse destroying a large building that you could have created if you would like to gain a level or two and catch up with your friends then mining can be a surprisingly effective and consistent way to get xp please be warned though this is bloody boring here's an important heads up about shroud survival flasks it's a bit misleading it says a plus two minute maximum time in the shroud so you might be thinking oh i'll keep these and they're coming handy if i'm running a bit low on time within the shroud if you're already in the shroud and you drink one the timer does not actually go up they only actually work before you've entered the shroud because of the destructible terrain in enshrouded always keep your eyes out for when you can use this to your advantage even a more difficult encounter can be made surprisingly simple with just a few well-placed thermal detonators this poor old matron didn't really stand a chance i do hope i've helped you out and i hope you continue to have fun in enshrouded i know i am Please remember to like the video, it does make a big difference to small YouTubers just like myself. See you soon and take it easy.